Hello everybody, welcome to this new tutorial. Today I explain to you how to set up your MIDI instrument properly and I'll explain to you the MIDI signal chain. Okay, let's start. So as you can see I have Cubase opened at the moment and as soon as I do a right click over there there's a context menu opening. I don't want to work with audio at the moment, this is why I don't open an audio track and it's the most obvious one to work with MIDI so let's open a MIDI track. And let's call this one test MIDI. So we have a MIDI track now and what you can already see here is that we have channel 1. For our inputs we have the all MIDI inputs and for our outputs we have the IAC driver bus 1. The big problem now is when I press a key on my keyboard I get a signal as you can see over there but there's no sound. So for that I have to explain to you a little bit about MIDI. So you can see this picture over here. This is the signal MIDI chain and the first thing we can see is over here this is our MIDI controller. So this can be a keyboard, a synthesizer, a control panel, a drum pad. Everything connected to middle. This goes through a cable. It can be a USB cable or a MIDI cable to our computer and then to our DAW. So this is our input because we are going from this side to the computer to the DAW. At the same time we have our software instrument over here. This could be a virtual keyboard, a synthesizer, strings. And this instrument is triggered by our door as well over those MIDI channels over there. So as soon as I play something on my MIDI controller I tell the software instrument to play a sound if I have made the connection properly. So for example if I press the key D on my MIDI controller and I have loaded a virtual instrument, for example an acoustic piano, then I tell through the door my instrument to play exactly the same note. So again let's make this clear. We have our input, our MIDI controller going to the door and we have our software instrument as an output going through the MIDI tracks to the computer as well. So you see we need to have the right setup in our door. If we just open a MIDI track and we don't connect it with our software instrument, we won't hear anything. There will be no sound for our speakers or for our headphone. So let's go back to the Cubase and see how we do that. We're back in Cubase now and there's still our MIDI track loaded. But what we have learned now is that we have to make a connection between this track and our virtual instrument. So it doesn't work like this. I removed this track and now I'm not loading a MIDI track. I'm loading an instrument track. So you can see there's a different window over here. It already asks me to open a virtual instrument. As soon as I do that I have this register over here with a lot of different options but it doesn't tell me strings or piano because now what Cubase wants is that I open a sound module, a kind of a synthesizer which includes all those samples, those virtual instruments. So I open the Helion Sonic SE now because this one comes with Cubase and then you can follow my steps on your own Cubase at home. So as soon as I do that there's a program opening. This is the Helion Sonic SE. I also rename my track because then it's a little bit more organized so let's just call it instrument test. And you have to think about this as a own program running simultaneously at the same time together with Cubase. If you lose that window at any time you can just recall it from here. You can also close it or recall it, it doesn't matter. So let's now look at our routing again. You can see in our inputs we have written all MIDI inputs. All MIDI inputs means that every control panel, every instrument I have connected to my computer triggers a signal through this door and plays a sound in the Helion Sonic SE from the instrument I have loaded over there. You can see I can change my routing as well. There's also some nonsense in my opinion. For example Scarlett 6i6. This is my audio interface so, so nothing will happen when I press a key on my keyboard over there. So I can go back and change this routing for example to the Keylab. Keylab is the keyboard I have connected to my computer. So as soon as I press a key we hear some sound just with the instrument which is loaded at the moment and the Hellion. If you want to make it easy for you and be 100% sure that you get the right connection just change back to all MIDI inputs. In the output you can see the Hellion Sonic SE at the moment. So this means that the Hellion Sonic SE, this instrument over here is connected to my DAW and plays a sound. So as soon as I press my key again you can hear some sound. 
this is a preloaded synthesizer coming by default with Helion. But if I want to change it, I can click over here and for example, I can choose a piano, an acoustical piano over there. So I make a double click, I load it. And if I press the keys now, you can hear there's a piano sound. Beautiful. So it is important that we work on the same channel in channel one in the instrument and in the Hellion. I could include a lot of more instrument inside of the Hellion Sonic SE and connect it with MIDI tracks, but I show you that in a different video because this would be a little bit too complicated for now. But what I can do as well, I can do some adjustments on the instrument itself. If I go to mixer, I can change the volume over here. I have a fader. Now I won't hear anything. I can also change my panorama to the left and to the right. These are the same adjustments I could also do in my mixer in Cubase. So if I go to the fader over here, I can change the panorama to the left and to the right. I can change the volume as well. So guys, I hope you have a better understanding of how to set up your MIDI instrument now. I hope you understand the MIDI signal chain. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.